And now we return to Jimmy Allen. It is four days after the fight in which Nails Ballou, renegade pilot, met his master in Speed Robertson. There has been little flying since that scene immediately preceding the altercation between the two, and the veteran pilot Speed is plainly worried. We now find Jimmy and Speed seated on the porch of the pilot's quarters at the El Toque flying field. It's just after dinner. Twilight is settling over the foothills of the Sierras. You know, there's something about this country that gets to you, Speed. Why, look at those mountains. Isn't that a sight, though? Yeah. Yeah, they're pretty, all right. Oh, gee, they're... Well, they're just like a crimson picture in the glow of the setting sun. Uh-huh. And gosh, Speed, what a sunset. Oh, Jiminy, I don't blame people for raving about the scenery out here. Yeah, it's nice. I'll tell you, Speed, there's nothing like this flying game. You're out in the air all the time, and... Well, you just get a different idea of the country. Those mountains are a pretty sight when we sit here looking up at them, you know, just like the average person sees them. Yeah. But then we can take off in our ship and in a few minutes be right over the center of the range. Just think of that speed. We can see all the ridges and canyons and the valleys, and it's an entirely different viewpoint, a picture you never get unless you're flying. You get what I mean, Speed? Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty sight. Oh, that's what I like about flying. You get to see the world from a different angle. Hey, Speed, did you ever notice how different things look from the air? Now, you take that mountain range, for an example. We sit down here on the ground, and it looks huge. Great, towering peaks, and, well, it's huge. But then you fly over it in a ship at ten or 20,000 feet, and, Jiminy, it, it doesn't look big at all. These deep canyons look like little furrows, and all the peaks and ridges are smoothed out. Uh-huh. And, you know, speed life's kind of like that. When we're down here on the ground, some of our troubles look pretty big. Look sort of, well, you know, mountainous. But you get up in the air and look down, why, everything looks so small. And towns and houses, even. And people, oh, gee, they look like a bunch of little ants running around. And your troubles look that way, too. They don't seem big at all. Did you ever think of that, Speed? Yeah, I guess you're right, Jim. Hey, listen, you big bozo. Are you paying any attention to me at all? I've been talking here for 15 minutes, and I'll bet you didn't hear a word I said. Huh? Uh, sure, sure, Jim. Go ahead. I'm listening. Ah, uh, you're not either. I'll bet you don't even know what I was talking about. <laughs> All you do is sit there and you stare out at the hills. I'm listening, Jim. You were talking about the mountains, weren't you? Yeah, that's right. I was talking about the mountains and how big they look from here, just like our troubles do sometimes. Oh, sure, sure. That was it. Hey, Speed. What's on your mind? Something's bothering you. Ah, oh, nothing, kid. I was just thinking... Hey, listen to me, you old broken-down pilot. Something's worrying you. When you get that vacant look in your eyes, I know something's wrong. I uh, know. Go ahead and tell me some more about the mountains, Jim. I'll sit here and listen. <laughs> A lot of listening you'll do. Come on, Speed. What's the trouble? You can't fool me. I know there's something worrying you. And, well, I just don't like to see you worry. Now, a moment ago, you said something about her trouble sometimes seeming as big as that mountain range over there, didn't you? Yeah, that's right. Hasn't it ever struck you that way? Yeah, that's just the way this picture looks to me now. What do you mean? What picture? Uh, this whole situation out here. Oh, you mean flying for the movies. Well, yes, generally speaking. But what bothers me in particular, Jim, is the progress we're making. Or I should say the lack of progress. Yeah, we haven't done much flying the last four days. Oh, but gosh, Speed, the ships weren't ready. You said yourself there's no use trying to fly these ex-combat jobs unless they're in good condition. That's exactly what worries me. The condition of the equipment. Well, that's not your fault. And I'm responsible for the flying in this picture, Jim. And if the equipment is such that we can't fly, it's really my fault. But I don't see how you can even... Ah, th look what happened day before yesterday, Jim. We were all ready to shoot a scene, that one between the P-38s and the MEs. Yeah, I know. The camera ships were in the air. Baloo's 109s were in the air. We couldn't get our lightnings off the ground. Well, we found out what the trouble was. There was water in the gas. That's exactly the point. There was water in our gas, but Baloo's ships were all right. He didn't have any trouble. And by the time we drained all the tanks and refueled the ships, it was too late to shoot the scene. Don Stewart, the director, was plenty disgusted, and I didn't blame him. Oh, well, Speed, it was just an unforeseen accident. I'm afraid not. There's no reason at all why there should be water in our gas. Then look what happened yesterday when we tried to shoot that scene. Oh, you mean about the magnetos? Yeah. Yeah, we had to change mags on three of the engines, and the whole day was wasted doing that. Did Flash ever discover what had happened to them? Ah, uh, sure. After we'd wasted about four hours. And once again, Baloo's ships were all right, in the air waiting for us. Yeah, it, it does look sort of funny at that. Ah, uh, we're way behind schedule. Stewart's getting sick and tired of these delays. 
Both he and Milliken will think we're just fooling around out here, that we don't know our business. Well, there's one thing about it, Speed. Nails Baloo hasn't caused any more trouble. Well, that's another thing I don't like. You you don't like? What do you mean by that? Uh, Baloo is altogether too quiet. Neither he nor any of his pilots have even batted an eyelid. They don't even come over here at night and visit with us anymore. Well, I should think you'd be glad of that. You know, maybe after the beating you gave Baloo the other day, he's afraid to come over. Ah, uh, no, not that guy. He's not afraid of anything. He's been licked before. Now, Jim, it looks like the calm before the storm to me. Baloo is planning on something, and in the meantime, he's just laying low. I don't like it at all. Oh, don't worry about it, Speed. Everything will work out all right. What do you say we take a walk, huh? You'll feel a lot better. No, I can't, Jim. I'm expecting Milliken and Stewart any minute now. Milliken phoned from Hollywood, said he'd be out this evening. Oh, I wonder what they want. Well, I don't know, but I have a pretty good idea. Say, Jim, after Flash finally got those 38s running today, didn't you do some formation flying with Harry and Roy Phelps? Oh, sure, sure. I, I meant to tell you about it, Speed. Well, how do you get along? Oh, well, it seems to me that Harry Phelps is getting worse instead of better. For a while, I led the formation and had him flying number two position and Roy at number three. Well, what happened? I couldn't get Harry to come in close at all. I'd motion him in, but he'd just stay out there. I'm afraid it was a pretty ragged formation. And Roy wasn't much better. Harry wouldn't come in close, huh? No. And then I motioned him up in the lead, and I flew number two position. Every time I'd pull up into position, he'd pull away from me. Just wouldn't let me get in close at all. Yes, I was afraid of that. Poor Harry has a wind up. There's just no use kidding ourselves about it. He seems to hate having a ship within a mile of him in the air. And then did you see him landing today? No, no, I was busy in a hangar with Flash. Well, he took three shots at the field before he could get it down. Well, that's too bad, Jim. He's a nice guy, but he just has no business flying. I don't know what we can do with him. Milligan wants to use him if it's at all possible. Well, he, he may get better, Speed. I'm afraid not. You can't teach an old dog new tricks. He's just lost his nerve. Oh, here comes Mr. Milliken and Mr. Stewart, too. Oh, yeah, they're right on time. Well, good evening, gentlemen. Hello. Good Hello, evening. Hello, Robertson. Alan. As I told you over the phone today, Mr. Robertson, there are some matters I want to discuss with you. Yes, yeah, surely, Mr. Milliken. Let's go into my room. We can talk there without being interrupted. Fine. Good idea. Come along, Mr. Allen. We'll include you in this conference, too. Very good, sir. How do you find living conditions out here, Robertson? Oh, very good. We have no complaints to make, whatever. Fine. Well, here we are. Go ahead, Mr. Milliken. Yes, thanks. Quite a spot you have here, Robertson. Yes, it's all right. Close the door, please, Jim. Make yourself comfortable now, gentlemen. All right, Mr. Milliken. I know you came out here to discuss business, so we may as well get on with it. Yes, that's right. I'll be very frank with you, Mr. Robertson, because, well, because we're all in the same boat. And I believe a clean-cut discussion of our problems may lead to a quick solution. Why, surely, Mr. Milliken, I've always found that the most satisfactory way of getting at anything. I'm very disappointed with the progress being made on these flying sequences. According to Mr. Stewart, we've been unable to do any filming in the past three days. Is that correct? Yes, it is. Stewart also informs me that these delays are the result of our ships not being in flying condition. We certainly can't shoot flying scenes with the planes resting on the ground. Mr. Stewart is right. We've had a lot of mechanical trouble. At no time have we had a sufficient number of our ships to get the flying scenes the story calls for. Well, what seems to be the trouble, Robertson? I hate to admit it, Mr. Milliken, but it's hard to explain. Two days ago, we found water in the gas tanks and had to drain every ship. Yesterday, we had to change magnetos on three of the P-38s. Well, we've had other little difficulties, too. We just can't have this, Mr. Robertson. The situation is rapidly approaching a crisis in this matter of time. As I told you when we completed the deal, this picture must be in the hands of the exhibitors in 30 days. That means that every minute of our time is scheduled. We're working on a very close margin, and a few delays, such as we've had the past couple of days, will disrupt the entire schedule. The weather's been excellent, too. Just what we need for the flying shots. Gentlemen, I realize the gravity of the situation, but, but these mechanical difficulties have happened in, in spite of all the ordinary precautions which we've used. The delays are bad enough, but I learned something today that's very alarming. In fact, it's because of this latter reason that I took the trouble to come out here. Oh, it's happened. Some new development? Decidedly. You know, Pacific Studios, the crowd for whom Major Ballou is working, also are filming an air picture. Oh, yes, I know they are. Mr. Robertson... I learned today that the picture they're making is very similar to the one we were doing. In fact, it's nearly identical. Oh, by George, you don't mean it. The information I have came from an unquestionable source. 
they're doing a war story with plot, action, and characters that parallel our own scenario. A bunch of thieves, those Pacific people. Oh, but isn't, isn't that against the law? Didn't your copyright protect you or something like that? Oh, they're clever enough to make sufficient changes to keep on the safe side. But here's the point. Here's the part that worries me. If Pacific Studios release their picture first, we may as well throw our story in the ash can. Oh, I see. Oh, but if our story gets out to the movie houses first, we're okay, is that it? That's exactly it. The Pacific crowd has stolen our idea. And if they can beat us in completing the picture, the time and money that we'll have spent on filming Coughing Nails will be utterly wasted. Didn't you tell me that Nails Ballou read this story of ours? Why, by Jove, he did. He did read this story. I'll lay ten to one. He's taken the story to Pacific. Yes. Yes, and for some reason or other, Baloo's ships have experienced no troubles. They've been doing a lot of filming with them the last three or four days. Gentlemen, this is a very serious situation. Our story must be completed and released before Pacific Studios finish their story. We must beat them to the finish line. The success of the picture rests in Speed's ability to keep his ships flying. Join us with Jimmy and Speed in the next air adventure of Jimmy Allen.